11 years ago, I started a countdown show called 7 on Sunday. In that time, I've talked about hundreds of artists in a variety of formats with all roads leading us here to episode number 300, also known as the one where I forcibly bring in my dad Keith to sit down and react to seven decades worth of music. I'm honored to be here. These aren't just any songs you'll be listening to. These are my favorite songs of all time. Anything past about 1977, I'm I'm totally out of it, but uh, I'll do my best. I chose two songs I love from every decade from the 2020s back to the 1960s. We hit shuffle on the 14-song playlist, had him react accordingly, and made him guess which decade he thought each song was from. Like and subscribe or I'm bringing disco back. On a real note, this is one of the most special videos I've ever made. My dad was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 2018, less than a year after retiring from his 36 years as a teacher. We're raising money for the Michael J. Fox Foundation. If you want to join the fight against this life-altering degenerative disease, tap the donate button below the video to help us raise funds for the Michael J. Fox Foundation. The only thing cooler than cool is retro cool, and my dad has never heard any of these 14 songs until now. I just hope they never let him down. Not too deep so far, but uh, we'll see. Instrumentation's good. Mm -hmm. Lyrics are a little weak. Now, I know you're going to tell me that this is sold to a quadrillion... Are lyrics make or break for you on a song? Yeah, lyrics... Uh, really? Always? Just about. Even the Barney theme song? Even Barney. Well, this is something I could easily listen to. Mm -hmm. It's got a good beat. Seems I like good. the synthesizer. Mm -hmm. uh, his voice is good. I can see me, if it was a little bit faster, I could see me breakdancing to this. You were a pretty obscure uh, breakdancing talent that never really uh, got a fair shot, so... That's because I broke my back. I'm sitting here in a body cast. What decade do you think Never Let Me Down by Depeche Mode? came out in. Wait, it's coming to me, it's coming to me, the 2010s. So we're going to go 2010s for our first win here, Never Let Me Down, Depeche Mode. We got to figure out why he's not getting along with his best friend. Then. <laughs> I hope he never lets him down again. That's all I can say. Go to Sleep by Radiohead. Do you listen to much Radiohead before or have you? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Just see if you can pick up on the kind of political themes on here, undertones. I'm getting chills. That's that's a good thing. I think your air conditioner just cut off. No, it's it's chills. I really love the guitar work on this track. Oh, it's one of my excellent. Sound like anything that we might be dealing with, but history repeats itself. Yep. First stanza seemed like sounded a lot like the 70s, but I know it's a lot later. Okay. I'm hearing a little Rolling Stone. In one place, you could obviously tell the person was, the singer was British. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad that you picked up on that, yes. The enunciation, but also the uh, guitar. It had a little bit of an English feel to it, to you? Yeah, it did. What seemed to convey the message best to you about the mood of the song? The lyrics were somewhat sad, mm -hmm. as if it's someone trying to beat in an addiction. Mainly, mainly though, I, it felt like somebody reaching out for, for help. From like drowning in whatever, whatever they might be lost in. Whatever it is, whether it's drugs, whether it's politics, whether it's unfairness of systems, I don't. Maybe that's where the title of the song comes in, Go to Sleep. You're trying to shut off all of those intrusive thoughts and just get some peace. What decade do you think Go to Sleep by Radiohead came out in. Well, see, I don't even know if these groups are still in existence. I'm going to say it's this decade. We're going to mark one down for the 2020s. Noted. Well, believe it or not, these these lyrics are very similar to what we listened to back in the 70s. Sure, yeah. And 1971 was the year that really changed all of that with people like, you know, John Lennon and Marvin Gaye, a lot of people putting out protest songs uh, in the form of 
backlash to Vietnam. Now it's time for my dad to experience a taste of something modern. So we dipped into the synth-popping pools of Magdalena Bay. I love the fusion of genres in this song. You'll hear everything from strings to guitars, synthesizers, and live drums. Got a good bass. Yes, very good bass. I'm not talking because I want to listen to the song. Does it kind of have you entranced? It took a while. It took a, a couple of stanzas, but you sure this isn't Madonna? It's not. Sounds like Madonna. <laughs> Do we have a wetter on our hands? This low, cool guy puts on sunglasses. I think that there is tension oh, yeah. the, in the air. And the lyrics don't match necessarily the, the upbeat music. When you're young, you have a lot of questions. Yeah. And they're hard to figure out. When you're my age, ah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I've always picked up on a sense of paranoia well that's funny you should mention that on a lighter note i do double and triple check the locks every night maybe you can just make this your new night and i got a new inhaler recently so i can breathe now (laughs) sucking on oxygen (laughs) what decade are we feeling for magdalena may what was so hard her voice sounds to me maybe i'm wrong i'm gonna say the 2000s 2000s all right we're gonna mark one down you're gonna have to start guessing some older decades too I love the harpsichord. I've always loved harpsichord music. Yeah, and you can tell that they're in different time signatures. Sounds Scottish or Irish. Mm, you're you're pretty close. English, yes. <laughs> English is correct. I have a an image of the year about 1750, a movie. Okay. A ship, man and a woman in love at sea. Yeah. That's that's called the Titanic. If my memory serves me correctly, that was 1757. <laughs> the Titanic. <laughs> the lead singer sounds like Davy from the Monkees. What did you feel overall? Happiness. Kind of a warm feeling. Yeah. Yeah. What about the song, if anything, stood out to you? The vocals. I love hearing British people talk and sing. Pretty much a tie between the two. You kind of had like a almost Baroque feeling or something to it, yeah? And if it ain't Baroque, don't fix it. Dad Jokes, sponsored by Dad Jokes. That was Golden Brown by The Stranglers. Yeah, you you played me something of theirs before. What did you think? I liked it. I'd say it's from uh, 90s. Okay, we're putting one down for the 90s for Golden Brown. Dad might be off to a slow start with the guessing, but he found a rhythm after this. Oddly enough, starting with The Rocker's Third Eye Blind. I love that it almost sounds like a little drum roll on top of it there. The song's about suicide. Yeah, prevention. Prevention, yes. Now, this instrumental break is one of my favorite, I guess you could say, crescendos. It's kind of a somber song. It is. But it needed to be written. I think it's a very powerful song. And you know that I've lost people in my life to suicide. And I know that you have as well. I don't know. I'm glad that you said that because I do think that something like that, especially in the decade that it came out in, when it wasn't as talked about as much, there's your hint, hint, hint. When do you think Jumper by Third Eye Blind came out? It's 90s or later. And we're going to the 90s for Third Eye Blind. Testing out the darker, deeper waters went over better than expected with my dad because I really wasn't sure how that would go. So let's keep it rolling with something a little bit brighter. This is See No Evil by Television. Television. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. I see Mick Jagger. I can see him throwing the uh, throwing his back out to it. <laughs> no, I can see him throwing the uh, microphone from one end to the next and up in the air. I believe they could have worked on the lyrics a little bit harder. 
<laughs> you're, a, you're a stickler for the lyrics, I know. Just one of the best guitar records. I know it's a lot later, but this is so much like the 70s. You are spot on. <laughs> 1977, my father. I liked it because it re reminded me of uh, college days. I hate to say this, but a lot of the stuff in the 70s was music for the sake of music, not mm. music for the sake of meaning. If they weren't serious singing lyrics at all, I'd listen to it because, it, like you say, the drum beat. Drum, and the guitar. Guitar. It's one of those sleeper hit type situations where the album is still being picked up by new generations today because it's influenced so many bands, including one that we're going to listen to later in this video. So I will see if you pick up on the television influence. Looks like we jogged some old college memories. So while we're there, let's get in the feels with an all-time classic. I'm not sure if you've ever heard the song before, but this is Cat Stevens. Oh, yeah. One of my all-time favorites, a classic called Father and Son. Oh, that's us. Yeah, that's us. Proud to have you. I'm proud to have you, tall son. You're still young. That's your fault. Look at me. I am old, but I'm happy. He's got a great voice. So good. I love when it picks up in the I try to explain from the moment I could talk? <laughs> yeah. You're still young. That's your fault. That's your fault. There's so I know I have to go. Now there's music. Whether you're the father or the son or whatever the relationship is, it's Well, we need to appreciate music from all decades and he even walks, centuries and walks yeah, of life. Sure. Well, first of all, if if he wasn't singing, if Cat Stevens wasn't singing, he was just talking, I could listen to him all day. If he wasn't singing, I could listen to the music all day. You know, there's a piano, there's a guitar, and there's Cat Stevens singing. It just doesn't feel like it needs to do more than, it doesn't have to overcompensate. Less is more sometimes. Well, we're at the halfway mark, and I gotta say that uh, nothing that that I've heard so far would be enough for me to go out and buy the CD or... Not even Cat with. Stevens, who you already were familiar with? Mm, probably not. So I'm looking forward to the next seven. Well, that, I, I just if I've got not given you anything purchase-worthy yet, I would hate to hear what you're going to say about the back half. Who we got here? This is Wolf Alice Heavenward. This is one of my favorite bands of all time. I'll try not to trash it. I think parents should, they don't all, but they should create a small bit of heaven. I think you're liking this one. This band is just a force to be reckoned with, I feel like, in terms of each member's individual talents. So, Heavenward, Wolf Alice, British band, a lot of my favorite bands are. Any thoughts on how that one hits you? Definitely emotionally heavy. I, I love it. I love it. I love you. <laughs> I love you because it's almost a hymn. Yeah, that's a that's an interest. I like that. Teared up a little. What I said earlier about these first seven not really doing that much for me this one does it wolf alice what are we thinking and why as far as the decade that it came out in i think it's now now is in 2020s mm -hmm. okay this is a great song mm. it's it's a greater poem i love the eclectic instrumentation too it gives it everything from rock to jazz to you know, you've got some flutes here. This was not a hit. I would have heard it if it was a hit, but it should have been a hit. I would say it's the 60s. Okay. And guess what, Dad? You're correct. And it's the British Invasion. You were again correct. This is the English progressive rock band King Crimson on their debut album released in 1969. At that time, they were playing no more than three minutes. And right. Usually it was two and a half. What were your thoughts? One word, beautiful. Almost like the peace of sitting by a river 
in autumn as the leaves are blowing and falling off the trees around you. Anxiety manifests in so many obscure mannerisms. I talked to the wind, dealt with it calmly, beautifully, but the Silver Sun pickups tackled it all loud and heavy. This next song is called Panic Switch by Silver Sun Pickups. They conveyed a message, I think, about anxiety in this song that soothed me a lot. Oh yeah, that's, we call that a meaty riff. Their bassist is a woman named Nikki, and she's an incredible player. Not too many women choose that. No, especially as a bass player. And I don't say, you love to see it. How did that song feel to you? I like it. Yeah. Number one, the bass. Mm-hmm the bass number two is the drums but as you know i'm not a fan of drums well you are picky you're finicky about how you like your drums but you really like the drums on this track i do nice as far as the writing or the vocals on the song what did you think about what brian albert wrote well first let me just say the voice is great they ride the line of what i was saying earlier with shoegazing and the idea of the the vocals being a little bit more in the background but it also has kind of an ominous urgent tone to it it does it does like a speeding train but it's a bullet train of anxiety lyrics uh c minus c minus c minus oh that one hurts what about the music music's Hey. I will tell you this, it's more modern than old. You probably already knew that. 2010s. Okay. Starting about 2010 or 2008 with the... Uh, with the recession. Recession and everything. Things have seemed to be out of control. I'm going to give it to you because you specifically called out the year 2008. This came out in 2009 as a direct result of exactly what you're speaking about 2009 so it's right at the edge this next artist is unfortunately no longer with us he died in his mid-20s unfortunately and he is a hip-hop artist do you know how hard it is to find a non-explicit rap song uh, to show you basically impossible i found one Things like this and guilt the less I might just fade like those before me Believe me, are you close? Yeah. Even if you don't, that'll get you from No run away, love, hate, love Heartbreak will have you bankrupt Too many days in a days, better wake up Which one would you choose, almost? Do you pick family or do you pick the substance? That should be an easy choice, but it's not It's easy. not It's mellow, but the words are not mellow no, it kind of weighs heavy on the head, and I think the instrumental has to be a little bit sparse because of that, to let those thoughts have room to breathe. I figured you might warm up to the idea of this song because you have liked some hip-hop adjacent music that I've showed you before, like Gorillaz, you really liked that song Feel Good Inc., and I think this one... I showed you because lyrically, you know, before I, I, I showed you a more fun side of hip hop and now I'm showing you a more serious. When do you think Mac Miller released that song? When do you think he wrote that song? Gosh, that could be so many different decades. And But I think about it in the context of addiction. We've seen so much with the opioid crisis and things like that. 2010s. We've got it noted. Only three to go, and we're really zooming around the decade quarters now, starting with a poet from the 1990s. This is Fiona Apple, a singer-songwriter, and this is The Way Things Are. I've hurt for... Volume good. Such a powerful vocalist with a very dynamic range. You know the uh, piano can be a percussion instrument. Sure, it is. A sway or a waltziness to it, kind of like a dance to the edge of sanity. She's not just putting words in blanks. No, no, it is a calculated takedown. Do you want to? Do you want to know what the title of this album is? 
When the pawn hits the conflicts, he thinks like a king. What he knows throws the blows. What he goes to the fight, and he'll win the whole thing for he enters the ring. There's no body to batter when your mind is your might. So when you go solo, you hold your own hand and remember that depth is the greatest of heights. And if you know where you stand, then you know where to land. And if you, you fall, it won't matter because you'll know that you're right. Wow. I like this one. It has a repetitive three notes or four notes. But it does a lot within those. It does. It does. Think of it as the foundation. On this song, it's another reminder of her saying that I don't feel that I'm deserving of love from these relationships that I get in because I expect to get treated like crap. As I was listening to this song, I kept thinking of Aretha Franklin's song, Respect. If you don't respect your for yourself first, you're not going to make it with uh, in a relationship. Why don't you go ahead and just tell me anything you think as far as the decade or when you think it came out. We'll say the 90s. Okay. This next band, The Zombies, were initially short-lived, but the legacy prevailed. And I had to show him one of the best tracks from their 60s masterpiece, Odyssey and Oracle. This is written from the perspective, I'll say, from somebody who is in prison writing a letter to their lover on the outside. I, ha- I had to pick one with Sunday as a lyric. This is seven on Sunday that people are watching after all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can tell me about your prison stay in the meth lab down the street. Our rental house, we had a meth lab bust on the street. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we also had Pazuzu. You remember Pazuzu? Yeah. What's that? The Satanist guy. They remember they found bodies in the backyard? Oh, gosh, yeah. That was so weird. This is probably the only song written from a guy who is girlfriend or yeah. wife while well, she's in jail she's, pretty, she's in jail <laughs> stay does it remind you of the beach boys at all with right there is yeah. beach boys i know you didn't mean to kill those 10 people come on baby come home so nice so nice so nice she was switched at birth with the boyfriend he yeah. wrote the song and singing it he was supposed to be the murderer. But it sounds so blissful. It's such a good song, and it's such a dumb song. I can see them running together in the video for this uh, slow motion. I've never heard it. Care of Cell 44. It's never said, the title is never said in the song, but it's referring to, you know, caring for the person that's in Cell 44 in prison. Sending them a letter. What a lovely song. A lovely song. Yeah, the guy's stupid. The 60s, not the early 60s, were happy songs. This kind of came in the in-between. I'm going by the lyrics. And, right. And the music. Right, what they convey. you got it right, of course. I've enjoyed this these last 13 hours. This next song is called... The Adults Are Talking by The Strokes. Now, this song, to me, is very much an adventure, and I hope you love it as much as I do. Julian Casablancas, the man who sings this song, wears shades like that sometimes. Now, that's cool. Kindred Souls. Oh! Oh, he put one down. Uh Uh-oh. The winner shades are officially on. That is, that says a lot. I don't think he I do believe. I believe we have a winner. You doing a little salt shaker, pick the cherries? My back can't take the twist. Neither can Mick Jaggers. Seven decades, 14 songs. The teacher becomes the pupil. Let's see how many decades my dad guessed correctly. All right, Keith, we have your test results here. Fingers are crossed. Dad, on track number one, we showed you Depeche Mode's Never Let Me Down Again. And while you said this song was released in the 2010s, it's unfortunately from the 1980s, 1987 to be specific. That's not that far away from 2010. Track number two, we showed you Go to Sleep by Radiohead, a song that touched on themes of alienation, depression, and war. You guessed that it was modern from the 2020s. You are incorrect. That came out in 2003 at the height of the war in Iraq. I get my wars mixed up. Song number three, we played you Hysterical Us 
by Magdalena Bay. And you guessed that it was from the 2000s. Their aesthetic is very much of the Y2K generation, but it's from 2021. I'm so sorry. Behind door number four, we had The Stranglers, your favorite band name of the day with the song Golden Brown. Now you said that that song, which was largely instrumental in its later half, is from the 1990s, but unfortunately, it's from 1981. So close, yet so far. Player number five that entered the chat, that was Jumper by Third Eye Blind, a song that touches on things like suicide prevention, and you guessed 1990s? And Dad, you were correct. Numero six. This was the band Television. See No Evil. You guessed 1970s, and you were absolutely spot on. Cat Stevens, lucky number seven, seven on Sunday. You guessed 1970s, and ding, ding, ding. You are correct yet again. 1970 is the year of release for Father and Son. Song number eight, you really seemed to gravitate towards. You showed uh, an emotional response to this one. This was Heavenward by Wolf Alice. And you guessed the 2020s. Unfortunately, you were in the neighborhood, but not quite right, and it was 2017. Number nine, you listened to what may have been your favorite song, you told me, I Talked to the Wind by King Crimson, and you said that that came out in the 1960s, and you were correct. That was 1969. Track number 10 was Panic Switch by the Silver Sun Pickups, and you got this one. I'm giving it to you. What can I say? I mean, when you got it, you got it. On number 11, we had you listen to a more somber hip-hop track that was Woods by Mac Miller. You came around on it, I think. You kind of enjoyed it, didn't you? I did. I had a preconceived notion that I wouldn't like it. Yeah, and it changed your mind. Well, rest in peace to Mac. This song was written in 2018, shortly before he passed, so that is why we count it, even though it came out posthumously in 2020. It looks like on number 12, you said Fiona Apple's The Way Things Are was from the 1990s, and sir, you were correct. Lucky number 13 was The Zombies, and that was Carousel 44. You easily spotted that as the 1960s and were correct in assuming so. And on number 14, you really, really seemed to get into this one. You threw on The Winter Shades, The Adults Are Talking by The Strokes. I get why you guessed the 2000s. If I was unfamiliar, I would too, because they came up in the 2000s, but it's from the 2020s. Dad, I am excited to let you know that you got 8 out of 14 correct. I was going to give it to you if you got 6 right, but you have just won an ice cream party. Any good deals on this ice cream? No, not too much, right? Mm-hmm. Blue Rim is pretty good. Well, we can, it's on sale. You pick one and I'll pick one. What you want? Rocky Road. Rocky Road, alright. One for you. Thank you so much for watching the video. We've had a lot of fun putting it together. I, I have enjoyed it. I've learned a lot about music in the 60s, 70s, all the way up to the present day. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.